Welcome to Couve.com. I'm David Medor, and we have Tiffany Couch with us today. Tiffany is a CPA and a fraud examiner and instructor of fraud examiners across the United States, a forensic accountant. Uh, basically, they don't do they get any higher than that, Tiffany? <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Well, you, uh, your office is actually an officer's row, uh, which is a national treasure, I believe. And you are part of that national treasure. You're right here in Vancouver. You are in great demand these days, going to various cities and counties, uh, helping them to understand, whoops, what happened. Correct. And so you are, your uh, credentials are as impeccable as they come. Thank you. I'm so thankful that you're right here in our backyard and you've been able to address the biggest project in our history to turn the light of day onto that project. Correct. Welcome. What do you got? You have an update for us. I do have an update for you, and, and my update is this in a nutshell. It appears that uh, Washington State residents who will be paying the tolls across the bridge are going to actually be paying for Oregon's interchanges, or at least part of Oregon's interchanges. In other words, uh, there is, we have a map here that shows the various components. This is Oregon over here, a red, all those interchanges. We have the purple is our, is a bridge, and the blue is the Washington interchanges, and the green being light rail components. And so basically what we have here, uh, if everything was even and everything was right, the tolls that would be charging for this would be for the bridge itself. That's correct. And what we are saying is that, guess what, we've kind of shifted things around here. Right. And this and this uh, uh, portion of this red is really kind of being shifted into the purple. That's correct. In other words, what this, what this map and these columns here are being represented to the lawmakers, saying here's what each part costs, and they're believing this is true. Sure. It, is it true? Is it actually even close? Well, two things. First, this the total cost of the project here does match some of the CRC's own documents. So I think it's important to understand that the total matches, but the problem here is that the components of each are misstated on the map when you compare the map to the CRC's own detailed budgets. Okay, for instance, the cost of the what is the real cost of the of the bridge itself? The sure. purple. So the purple, and let's just show everybody so they know I actually used a real document. This is what's called a base cost estimate. Where'd that come from? This is a CRC uh, generated document that okay. is detailed. I mean, it tells us the number of linear feet of pavement that's gonna be poured at each interchange. It shows us how much construction staging is gonna cost, how much site work is going to cost, and it, it breaks it down by interchange, by bridge, by transit, etc. Okay. So I wanted to make sure that I could reconcile this to the map. Okay. In other words, this was this is what they put out. That's right. Did you have any problem getting a hold of this, this I documentation? Did. So I asked about 18 months. I asked for a detailed budget. And I was told that there were no detailed budgets. And it didn't make sense to me because anytime anybody's able to summarize costs, right, you have to somewhere. use detail to summarize sure. costs. So a year and a half it took for you. You finally got it. Right, because I asked for the right specific and document. And this looks like how many? It's, like it's 24 pages of uh, hundreds fine of print. lines. So you went through this. I did. Okay. I went through this with a fine tooth comb. And I found some things out that are interesting and I think most people would be interested in knowing. I know the legislators have been very interested in understanding. Mm -hmm. The first is that $1.2 billion cost that's being billed by the CRC is the cost of the bridge portion is actually much less than what they're telling us. What is it really? Um, it is about $800 million in, in to, to compare dollars for dollars with this map. So the real cost is $800 million, which is 0.8 billion right and they're saying it's 1.2 billion correct well, it's only about 50 percent yeah off, it's right? almost a half a billion off okay. you know why would they say that is less than it really is well by that much feel off by 50 percent well one of the questions i had is well where are the other costs going and what i'm finding out is for example the oregon interchanges which they're billing at 595 million dollars when you um, compare apples to apples with their budget it's it's actually in the seven to eight hundred million dollar range, and what's in other words, they've, they they're telling us it's really going to cost more here, and it's really going to cost less, less there, there. And really, they've shifted it, That's and correct. now the taxpayers uh, or the the commuters of Clark County are on the hook 
uh, for this shell game they're playing. Well, and let's let's explain that. You know, the, each state was going to be responsible for about four hundred and fifty million dollars worth of costs, and it's been explained over and over again that the cost of the bridge is going to be told. Um, the majority of those tolls are going to be paid for by the people of Southwest Washington, sure. the people that are commuting. When you shift the cost of Oregon interchanges into the cost of the bridge and then you toll it, okay. you've got the people of Southwest Washington now paying for Oregon's interchanges. Okay. So to move on, we have in your document, you've, you've discovered something else. Basically, that what's shown here that what we're getting you find you found some small print. Yeah, I on did that find document. some small print. So uh, actually, what I'm what I'm interested in is this guy here. Sure. You pointed out something a little fine, small print here. Yes, I wanted to reconcile this detailed budget with the map and this uh, very and, detailed. And what does that say? Report. And what this says is this three point five billion dollar project here mm -hmm. is actually what's called a phase one build. And a phase one build means that there are three major components of this project that they're actually not going to be doing. Um, the first being the Victory Braid, the northbound Victory Braid interchange is being eliminated. Um, the Marine Drive um, flyover interchange is being eliminated. And the northbound connection at SR 500 in Washington State is being eliminated. In other words, what they have been selling us all along here, which shows the map and shows the cost here, they really pulled those basic components out of here, in, which in in reality says you, you this is what you're getting, but you're not really going to get that. You've taken off the front seat from the car, you've taken off the rear wheels from the car, and by the way, it's still going to cost the same. It's still going to cost $3.5 billion, and what's interesting is, my question is, by taking those major components out on the northbound section of the project, what does that do to the afternoon commute? Um, they've been touting a 15-minute savings on afternoon commutes, and now that looks to be in jeopardy if you're taking out some Basic of the big components. Some okay. of the big so, they, so we're paying for it, but we're, we're, they're really pulling it out. What are, is there, are we... Uh, also being charged for pork. We are. A project they don't show. That's <clears throat> correct. So that, one of the things <clears throat> that, that we're paying for, but, but by the way, it's we're not going to let you know that you're paying for it. When you go through the details of this budget, there's several line items that brought my attention or brought my curiosity out. We've already talked about the steel bridge improvements. Um, that's going to be $250,000 in today's dollars. We're going to restore the Hood River Channel. For Which five in, million dollars. I assume that's in Hood River. I'm assuming hour, that's in Hood River or uh, close east to of Hood here. River. So, certainly not shown on the map. That's not shown on the map. We're going to build a bike pedestrian bridge for seven point two billion do million dollars, and we're going to, of course, build the Ruby Junction maintenance facility for TriMet and Which Gresham. Which is not shown on the map. Uh, so we're building stuff here that, by the way, is all in Portland. That's correct. And uh, okay, and it's not shown. And in the CRC and budget, that, what does all that add up to? What well, we're... let's first remember we all are also helping TriMet build a an administrative office for their administrative folks in Portland, and we are contributing two million to that. Which of course is not shown on the map either. So that's about fifty-one million dollars for Oregon extras. So fifty-one million dollars for Oregon projects not shown on the map not revealed the only way you found about that is through the fine print fine print. of this uh, base cost estimate okay all right what what else uh, what other pork do we have in this thing well we're going to help the Vancouver waterfront project by building a bike pedestrian ramp for 6.2 million dollars that's quite a ramp it is okay. a ramp <laughs> we're going to build a curation facility which in layman's terms is a museum I'm using uh, the CRC's uh, terminology not my own um, how much so it's seven and a half million dollar seven museum. and a half million dollar museum okay and then we're going to go all the way up to Woodland which for those who are not in this area it's about 20 miles away north, um, north from the project mm -hmm. and we're going to spend 11 million dollars to uh, restore the Lewis River and then lastly, we have the $25 million community connector, which is the, the lid or the cap that purports to connect downtown Vancouver with Fort Vancouver. So none and of this so stuff is... so that's $50 is, million on the Washington side. It's shown side. here that's basically the pork. Okay, so... We're, <laughs> 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 All right. You would think that um, 
representation, forthrightness would help us to know what uh, what are we really getting, what are we really paying for that that would be welcomed. Right. Ha- you've surely communicated this back to the CRC, hey, uh, and let them know that I found some pretty basic differences from what you're representing compared to what you're really telling people or what's really there in the fine print. Have they responded to you and Me- say, meetings, we welcome that, we'll correct that, we'll fix that? Meetings are not welcome, unfortunately. I've tried okay. more than once to have different meetings with that office, and they basically say, we've provided you with all the documents, and there's no need for a meeting. Okay. So. All right. Where, where should we go with this? Any... Uh, where, where should we wrap it? Here's where I think you should wrap it. I, of course, have been in contact with the legislators, with our congresswomen, so they understand what's going on here. Mm-hmm. And they're basically telling me, Tiffany, we need to hear from our constituents. We love to get phone calls. We love to get emails, letters, etc. It other really words, does impact them and their ability to come off their support. Of so this. our representatives who are evaluating and making these decisions are asking, hey constituents, hey citizens, we want to hear from you. So we'll That's include right. their contact information in, in the uh, the text for this so that people know how to do that. That's right. Uh, I would think also that the our local representatives have a responsibility to welcome the truth for this project. Truth and trust and integrity, all of that Right. is, to me, non-negotiable. you got to tell us the truth if you're going to sell us something. I think the most important thing is we have facts here, and let's help our legislators, people like you who are representing local folks, to use the information and the facts to make better decisions. And now that those facts are here, you know, they're staring you in the face, and, and what decisions are you going to make as a result? Yes, okay. Well, thank you for being the truth teller. Thanks for turning on the lights. And uh, with, with that, if, if the CRC uh, bureaucracy responds and welcomes it, we'll follow up. We'll and follow up that and very we'll be good happy news. to say, hey, they've changed it. They've told us what the costs are and how much each state really is going to be responsible for. And we're going to be, we're going to champion that forthrightness. And for the meantime, you are the truth teller. Thank you very much for helping us with that. Thank and I you. guess we'll wrap it there. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Okay.